the mean waiting time at the drive-thru of a fast food restaurant from the time an order is placed to the time the order is received is 84.9 seconds. The manager devises a new drive-thru system that he believes will decrease wait time. As a test, he initiates the new system at his restaurant and measures the wait time for 10 randomly selected orders. The wait times are provided in the table. Now, because the sample size is small, the manager must verify that wait time is normally distributed and the sample does not contain any outliers. In fact, even before that, the manager has to make sure that this data was randomly selected. And so you see how he uh, obtained 10 randomly selected orders. So we're going to treat these 10 randomly selected orders as a simple random sample. Okay. So again, we have a small sample size, so we need to verify two things. One, we need to verify that the data come from a population that's normally distributed. Second, that the data have no outliers. We verify the normal distribution requirement via a normal probability plot. And you can see the normal probability plot on the screen. Let me zoom it in a little bit. And notice that all the dots lie within the confidence bands. Because all the dots lie within the confidence bands, it's reasonable to conclude that this data comes from a population that's at least approximately normal. We then want to verify that there are no outliers. We do that with a box plot. Remember, in a box plot, if there are outliers, they're going to show up as little asterisks, right, outside and out in the tails. And so there are no outliers in this data set, and in fact, we can see the median is a little bit less than 80. See that? So this might be some visual evidence to suggest, hey, maybe wait times did go down. But we want to know whether or not any, the mean wait time of these 10 is significantly less than 84.9. One last uh, mod requirement is the independence requirement we have 10 randomly selected orders. There's got to be at least 1,000 right, orders placed at any given day, week, month, customers, 1,000 customers. And what's 5% of even 1,000? 50. So our sample size is less than 5% of whatever our population size is. I mean, you would think that you'd have to have at least 1,000 customers to stay in business, right? So we're probably good to go on that model requirement as well. So yes, the conditions are satisfied. Now part B is asking, is the new system effective? Is the new system effective? And for that question, we're going to go ahead and go through the entire hypothesis test procedure. And so to go through the entire hypothesis test procedure to see if the system is effective, the first thing I need to do is establish my null and alternative hypothesis. Again, the null hypothesis is a statement of? No change, no difference. There you go. The hy null hypothesis is always a statement of no change, no difference. So what's the statement of no change, no difference here? Uh, yeah, that the mean with the new system is the same as the mean with the old system. The mean is still 84.9 seconds. What are we trying to gather evidence to show? That there's no change. Less yeah, we want to know if the mean times have decreased. De have decreased. So we want to know if the mean is less than 84.9 seconds. I mean, we wouldn't want to know if the mean has changed because we don't want the means to go up. We want the mean wait time to go down. The next step is to determine the level of significance. What's our level of significance? I think it was 0 0.01. So this, in this test, we're having a very low level of significance, which means that we want to avoid making a type 1 error. We want to avoid instituting a new policy if the system really isn't effective, if the system really doesn't reduce wait times, right?
because the lower the level of significance, the less likely it is that you make a type one error. And remember, a type one error means rejecting the null when the null is true. Rejecting the null when the null is true. In other words, <laughs> saying weak times have decreased when in fact they have not. Step three, we want to get the p-value, and we're going to get the p-value from Stack Crunch technology, right? And so, the nice thing about my Stat Lab is I can just open this in Stack Crunch, right? Well, I have Stat Crunch already opened, don't I? So I'll just copy this to the clipboard. Go over <coughs> to Stat Crunch. Paste it in. There we go. Very nice. And this is wait times, yes? So to get the p value, I go to stat, t stats, one sample, and now I have with data, I have wait times is my variable. My null is that the mean is. 84.9, that was the mean stated in the null, correct? That's the wait time historically that what we've had. And my alternative is a less than alternative, because I'm looking to gather evidence to show that wait times have decreased. Now I click calculate, and I get a p-value of 0 0.07. A p-value of 0 0.07. And it'd be nice to be able to interpret this p-value this p-value means that if we were to conduct this experiment a hundred different times, we would expect to get a sample mean of 78 or less in about seven of those experiments if the true population mean was actually 84.9 seconds. And so now the question that you have to ask yourself is, are these results that we got unusual if we're going to assume the mean is still 84.9 seconds? In other words, would you say, wow, I just observed something that happens only seven times out of 100. It must mean that this new system is effective. Well, that's, that's how you would answer it if you weren't given a specific level of significance to compare your p-value against. We happen to be given a specific p-value and for us, the p-value is greater than the level of significance because the p-value is 0 0.07 and the level of significance is 0 0.01. And when the p-value is greater than the level of significance, what's our conclusion? Do not reject the statement in the null hypothesis. So we would conclude there is not sufficient evidence to suggest the mean wait time has decreased with the new drive-through system. So we're, we're saying we're not going to go ahead and institute this new approach, this new policy. Now let's say that the manager is all disappointed in these results and says, ooh, I really wanted to institute this policy. I'm just going to go ahead and change my level of significance to point 0.1. Would that be fair to do? Is that something that's allowed? Change your level of significance after the fact, after you've collected your data and run your test. No, that would be sort of cheating, right? That would be cheating, so to speak. So that's why it's important to choose your level of significance prior to the data collection process as opposed to subsequent to it. 